Okay, this video is going to show you how to process the FNIR data. The assumption is that you've already um, cleaned your marker files, and um, we may do another video talking about how you can do your marker files to clean up the various uh, elements. Uh, there are multiple pulses, one to start the picture, one that is for um, in telling you where a startle probe was initiated, and then lastly one indicating that the picture's off. The pre-processing and cleaning element is where we go in and take out everything other than the picture on. That's all we need for the FNIR processing. So this video does not show the picture, uh, the probe cleaning portion. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is to open up our NIR file, our NIR file, and let FNIR soft load. It's going to immediately ask you if you want to open up the related marker event file, which we've already cleaned so that it only shows us when pictures start. Now the way I do this for our study is I actually label the habituation trials of our experiment as uh, the evaluation, uh, the habituation trials are labeled as 99 for the markers. Once you get to number one through 48, those are the experimental images. So now we have our first step here. What we want to do is to clean this data initially. So we're going to click Refine, and we're going to use the FIR filter with the default 20 Hamming, and this is going to take out some of the influence from heart rate um, and contamination from just the blood flow movement that is not associated with brain activity. So we click Apply. You can see that it cleans up some of the data. Then we're going to use the SMAR function, and the SMAR function is only available in the professional version, which we have for our laboratory, so um, if you're using the non-professional, you won't see this option. But we're going to SMAR clean based on filtered data. Leave all your defaults the same. It's going to reject any uh, information that is moving so quickly that it believes that it's not associated with brain activity but from a movement artifact. So the patient moved and that moved to the electrode. So I would assume that these lines here, this quick jump downward, that it will be eliminated as well. Also we had a problem with Optode 5 for this patient so I think they might just kick all of Optode 5. We're going to click apply and you can see most of Optode 5 went out and we had all of these jumps removed as well. Now. You normally won't have to do this for all participants, but I'm actually going to go to my raw view now, and I can see what each one of my probe data elements look like. Now I can actually right click on one of them and say toggle marker visibility, which will remove the markers temporarily, and you can clearly see that we're getting nothing from Optode 5. All the data was rejected. So then we're actually going to go right click on this, evaluate, and reject this optode. So now we've rejected this optode. We can close this window, and we're just going to exclude that optode from our further analysis. Okay, now we're ready to convert all of this raw data into oxygenation. So after we've already cleaned it, we're going to click the Oxy button. And then it's going to ask you what you want to do for um, this calculation procedure. Usually we're going to use our default baseline to calculate, although you can create a new baseline if you feel like that baseline was uh, not appropriate or didn't give a good baseline set. And we're going to use filter data and we're going to say use dark channels to select or channels to subtract ambient light. That's when our pulses are light, our probes are not on, but our sensors are reading how much light are they getting. So that's going to remove any ambient light or light from the room, windows, overhead lights from your signal. Don't worry about the coefficients, just click oxygenation. Now when we maximize this, we can see because we rejected Opto5, it was giving us no data. It's marked out here. It can be a little difficult to actually start working with your data when we're seeing all eight segments. So we will be, uh, I find it's helpful to actually right click on one of them and click view. 
and that's going to be easier to work with when you're laying down your markers. Okay, and so in the next video, we're going to end right here, and in the next video I'm going to show you how to lay down markers to extract the data from just our experimental trials, and then also to lay down our habituation markers for each particular trial.